Good morning, everyone. I am Tian, and uh, I am a research associate working with Professor Paul Longley at the UCL Geography. Um, here, I would like to share our recent work on charting changes in the geodemographic composition of the cities in late Victorian Britain. Um, so this, these are the contents I'm going to co cover in the next 20 minutes or so, uh, starting from the background introduction and then to methods and findings, and it will all be concluded with a few uh, summary points. Uh, late Victoria Britain has seen the rise of many industrial cities and uh, the middle class population, which has attracted attentions from many historians and also historical geographers. Uh, we would like to contribute to this field from a uh, quantitative geographer's perspective by applying the modern neighborhood classification techniques uh, to the historical context and answering uh, questions like how urban forms evolved during that period and how um, a population changed in terms of their demographics. So to answer these questions, we make use of the uh, digitized micro data from 1881 to 1901 provided by the UK DS and a special user license. Uh, the censuses record uh, information about individuals, um, names, age, household structures, occupations, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, this is the, um, this is the work, uh, our data processing workflow. There are mainly four operations in this flow, which will be demonstrated in, in the next few slides. Uh, we start from georeferencing the census addresses. This part of work ha had been introduced in our uh, 2019 DISRAC presentation at Newcastle, as well as a paper referenced in, in, in the last slide. Basically, the idea is to um, each historical address is, is assigned to its exact or most probable location from the uh, audience survey address base and also the GB 19100 gets here within the known parish using a, a fuzzy stream matching. Uh, eventually, we geocoded around over 70% of the unique addresses on average. And so to reconstruct the historical streets, we further match the geocoded address points to the modern OS open roads based on the matching street names and numbers, and also their um, spatial proximities. A street segment that uh, a street segment with at least one matched address point is considered to be an existing streets in that historical period. Um, so this map shows the reconstructed 1901 London streets in green superimposed on top of the 2016 road network of the Great London Authority area in red. And due to street renaming and even demolition during various uh, redevelopment and uh, slum clearance at later stage, we haven't uh, reconstructed every single residential streets uh, in that historical period. For example, uh, if, if, uh, if you can see my um, uh, mouse clearly here, the blank hole in the road network in South Arc here, um, which is Burgers Park now, uh, was redeveloped from a bomb residential area uh, in World War II. So with these uh, caveats in mind, we use a density-based clustering method called uh, dbscan to extract uh, street clusters from the reconstructed streets. We have experimented with a series of bandwidth ranging from 200 meters to uh, 3,000 meters of which three examples are shown in the map below. Uh, the color coding here is used to identify different uh, freestanding settlements. And uh, we uh, select 200 meters as the most appropriate bandwidth guided by the notions of uh, walkability of that time. It is also the minimum bandwidth to main maintain the integrity of the 
North and South London separated by the uh, by Thames River, we create a bounding polygon for each street cluster at one time point and define that as the city extent. The, the animation here shows the footprints of the historical London at three time points. And uh, the um, 1881 boundary in, in Black Contour, this would give you a bit of sense of uh, the urban growth of London during the 20 years period. So making use of the uh, individual level census records, we aggregate them into street level and apply geodemographic classification uh, to our historical streets. It's a neighborhood classification method that groups uh, neighborhoods according to their socio-demographic similarities, which has been widely used in the modern context, such as the 2011 UK census output area classification. Uh, these social demographic attributes uh, used in our study are selected from uh, five domains. Um, first of all, demographics, for example, the percentages of working adults, and also household structure, employment, and uh, residential mobility, which is measured using the uh, percentage of residents live in their birth parishes. So our k-means algorithm um, outputs six uh, geodemographic groups. We provide a short pen portrait for each of the groups based on the uh, group profiles show, shown in the radio course below. For example, uh, here in the uh, one o'clock uh, direction, the high social status group in orange shows the high proportions of uh, households living with um, um, dom dom domestic servants, while the uh, hard pressed um, production families in black have more uh, child laborers. Although demographic classification is a relatively modern tactic, street based social classification was used by Charles Booth um, more than 100 years ago to display his. Uh, uh, social survey, the result of his social survey. So this is a screenshot from the uh, uh, Booth map, uh, Booth poverty map digitized by the LSE project. We can see here um, the upper class around the Hyde Park and also poor people in uh, East London and also the South Bank of the river. We also visualize our street assignment according to the six groups we de developed in London in 1901, of which the spatial uh, distribution shares a broad brush similarity to both social classes. And if we switch uh, to South Wales, we found more than 100 years ago, Cardiff has um, some clusters of uh, blue streets which might have housed Porters and other casual employment workers. We can also find hard pressed production families in the valleys at the northwest corner where the coal mines were. Uh, similarly, we can find um, concentrations of artisanal communities in purple uh, in um, West Midlands. Since we have developed the temporal classification of streets for 1881, 1891, and 1901, we can investigate the uh, geodemographic changes. Uh, taking Bristol as a study case, we separate the changes of street assignments by the existing streets in 1881 and new streets built in after that. Uh, we found most of the reassignments of the existing streets are transferred to the sales and family group, uh, um, while we see clusters of new streets are assigned to high social status households in the northwest of the city, uh, and po also poor and um, poor and and casual employment employment in are founded in the uh, south bank of the river. And these changes can also be quantified by the proportions of, of groups 
within a city extent defined in the previous um, slides and also visualized as uh, the city profiles. Cities appear to have developed in a self-similar way in terms of their demographic structures. And we can draw a tentative urban tap, uh, topology from the different shapes of the radar plots. For instance, Bristol with a balanced structure functioned as a commercial and administrative center, Birmingham as a manufacturing city that were underpinned by artisanal occupations. Manchester as a production hub hosted textile factory workers and Liverpool as a port city with higher proportions of casual employment, such as porters. So this typology may also reflect the diversification and the speci uh, specialization among cities and regions during the post-industrial urban development. So to summarize, uh, for the first time, we have defined the extent of uh, the GB-wide segments in the historical period, which frees our analysis from uh, reliance upon sometimes arbitrary administrative units, such as the historical parishes. We also have devised a scale-free geodemographic classification of the uh, historical residential streets, which allows us to chart the demographic changes over the 20 years period. Uh, these two data frameworks can be further employed to study the social and spatial mobility of the Victorian population. And they also offer the potential to better understand how nexus of regional, regional uh, development shaped these successful and sustainable uh, city systems. And at last, we would like to thank the Integrated Census Microdata Project and the GB19100 Gas Tier Project for making those uh, wonderful data sets available. And um, thank you very much for your listening. Um, so there's a question from, from Angela. Uh, in the slide of your workflow, you show the geodemographic classes as being based on both georeferenced and unreferenced data. Uh, will you explain how you're able to incorporate the unreferenced data? Uh, yes. So um, for the um, for the reconstructed uh, street patterns, uh, of course, we have missed uh, some of the uh, streets because we we haven't georeferenced uh, all uh, census addresses. But for for the uh, geodemographic classification, we we developed here. Uh, we take both uh, georeferenced uh, census records and non-georeferenced census records into consideration. Basically, we we lump the um, uh, we lump the records uh, into our k-means algorithm uh, at the uh, using using the street segment as the uh, analysis units. Then we develop a um, temporal geodemographic classification uh, of um, all streets uh, uh, in, 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 this, in the 20 years period. So this is how we uh, deal with the non-geo-referenced historical census records.